Yeah, Dr. Lani, I was referred to you for severe keratoconus, and it had been explained options of intacts and, and corneal transplants, um, and was fortunate that my eye doctor did refer me to you and said, Dr. Galani has come with other options um, to look at that. Could you, you know, I've had the surgery. Um, it's fantastic. As a teacher, I have to go from looking at a small screen to a big screen. Um, I coach my daughter in softball. I can see the spin on her balls now. Um, so now that I've had the laser technique, which is non-traditional for keratoconus, I'm very happy with the results. Uh, could you tell me, you know, why was my case good for this? Why, why did you think this would be a great option? Because I'm very happy with it. As you know, Phil, with uh, all our patients, you included, I go through an extensive discussion before surgery in how to design a surgery that's best for you and uh, keeping your long-term safety in mind. The keratoconus, uh, typically, traditionally, the surgeries for keratoconus are transplants. And again, transplants can be done at different levels. Uh, anterior lamellar, deep lamellar, penetrating keratoplasty, even artificial cornea transplants. Then, before you get to transplant, the new technology out there is called intax, where you put in tiny little rings or braces in your cornea that make the cone into a dome, and then you wear contacts or glasses yeah. over it. Now, another option I'd like to give patients like you who have keratoconus, but also who have the potential to see and have certain criteria that they have to meet uh, for the safety. I do perform laser on keratoconus. Now mind you, as we discussed, this is not LASIK. I do not like anybody doing LASIK on keratoconus because that will weaken your cornea and lead to abnormalities later. But doing the, the laser surgery in a surface mode to correct your shape of the keratoconus so you can see is an excellent modality, I feel. One thing to remember, like me and you went through this extensive discussion, Phil, is the risk factor. Well, doctor, you're doing laser on my thin cornea. What if I get worse with keratoconus? You can. Clinically, given the amount of tissue I remove in keratoconic patients, because most of them have astigmatism, it's very little. In that, your cornea isn't really weakened that much. Number two, if your cornea were to progress, either naturally your keratoconus was getting worse, or let's say theoretically you blame the laser for it. Either way, if your keratoconus gets worse enough that your vision drops and it's become very thin, now you can have the intax. But the reason I wouldn't prefer intax in you is you had good potential to see, so I thought if I can shape you up and give you vision without contacts and glasses, that will free you up. While putting you in intax would then make you dependent on contacts and glasses still further ahead. While intax now becomes a backup for you if your keratoconus progresses and becomes worse. If intax don't work, I can do a transplant. My ability to do this whole spectrum of surgeries for keratoconus helps me decide what's best for what patient. And that truly is the, the fact that really enthralls me. Like you just said, Phil, um, I saw you after your laser surgery, which lasted about a few minutes. Yes. And I remember your family was watching and we discussed with them. And today you're telling me you can see, like, how did you describe it? The, the, uh, you can see the spin on my daughter's curveball. There you go. That's, I mean, that's, that's music to my ears. As, as a surgeon who looks at his surgery as art, uh, Phil, you are a teacher, I'm a teacher to our surgeons. I, I, I love this Q&A sessions we had before surgery and now we are having for the benefit of others. So the discussion here is LASIK should not be done on keratoconus. Absolutely, I agree. But laser vision surgery in a, in a special mode can be performed on keratoconus to give the vision outcomes like Phil has had Understanding that if your keratoconus gets worse, either naturally or by the laser, you can now have intacts. And if that doesn't work, you can still have transplants. But it's very important to provide this option because the, the value of film, uh, how would you describe it? The value of having a surgery which you don't need to wear contact glasses, it lasts a few minutes, and the freedom you have. How is that and how is the discussion we had? The discussion we had was thorough. I mean carefully explaining all the options and why in my particular case from all your diagnostics that it was appropriate for that to try this um, gave me a lot of confidence and it just meant a lot to me to have that option before we went to the intact or the cornea for invasive. Uh, as far as afterwards the freedom, as I said, I'm a teacher and I go from reading a child's paper or looking at their lab work up close to looking at a big presentation on the board and I don't have to play with glasses or I don't have to mess with contacts. I can see everything I need to see now. And then as a coach, and I mean just for 
I love watching my kids play, but just for safety, I don't have to wear, you know, corrective vision. I don't have to wear a face mask. Um, I can see what my players do, and, and it's just the freedom's been the most important thing. It's just been wonderful. Excellent. Cool. So, I mean, our, our results have been consistent in the patients that we've selected <coughs> for laser, but uh, it's really great, uh, this session that we are having today after your surgery, mm -hmm. where from one teacher to another, we are grilling each other again, <laughs> like we did in the room, where I insisted <laughs> that you understand everything before I give you this option. And, and it's important because, uh, you know, everything, like I say, vision is an art. It does not cookie cut away of saying this patient or every keratoconus patient needs intact and transplant. Wrong. There are so many ways of doing surgeries depending on what, how you present. And looking at your kind of keratoconus, the kind of refractive error you have, the kind of vision I can get, given that your other eye was much better. Mm -hmm. And plus, uh, for the benefit of people watching, uh, when I do laser on keratoconus, I always do one eye at a time for both reasons again, safety as well as to know how well we have landed because your predictability is much low than a normal case of lacing. So, um, Phil, thank you for this time and the mm -hmm. grilling we've done, but anything you'd like to um, explain to people like you out there? Um, of course, the thing that me and you keep saying, mm -hmm. do your research, do your research, question your surgeon till the cows come home, mm -hmm. uh, insist on why they're offering you what they're offering you. Um, is that a safe technique for you? And if not, do they have a plan uh, as a backup plan for you, because that's very important. What do you say, Phil? I, I just I would reiterate that um, my my comfort level to try this was that it was very thoroughly explained, and you even asked me to critique it and go elsewhere and and do my research and find out about this. And you were so thorough in explaining it to me in terms I could understand and my family could understand, presenting the backup options um, that would be there, and you know saying these these would be you know you could have this freedom um, if you were comfortable with with doing this and, and I was totally comfortable with it um, um, your staff here was great my surgery day um, I, I felt guilty about taking a day off it was like this was it oh my goodness <laughs> so my right. wife and I got a, a two days off for you know a very very easy procedure painless and um, I, I was just very happy that, that I was referred to you good luck there and and, and um, was able to have this done here. Um, I'm again, very happy. Thank you for sharing this. Mm -hmm. and I hope, again, uh, being a teacher, I love Q&A. As you know, in the rooms, we do it all yeah. the time. But now we are letting uh, other people also get an insight into what are the options out there and how I insist that they do research and uh, plan surgery. Because truly, surgery is an art. I mean, mm -hmm. the final endpoint is mathematical. It's vision. But it is an art in how it should be approached how the patient should be educated and then, of course, measuring outcomes. For you to see 2020 today without glasses and contacts, through a keratoconus, yeah. with a three-minute laser, uh, to me, I think, is the future wave. And you know why, especially, Phil? Uh, there's also technology coming out there, which I've looked at in Europe. It's called collagen cross-linking. We have discussed this, too. Mm -hmm. Which actually, after doing laser, most likely after FDA approves in the U.S., maybe we could even kind of cross-link the cornea, or in simple language, we could freeze the cornea uh, in that permanent position mm -hmm. so it would not increase in keratoconus. Right. Mm -hmm. So this could be the future for many keratoconic people who live a life of uh, vision imprisonment. Yeah, that would that's a perfect term for, for what it felt like. Right? Absolutely. Keratoconic patients I feel very badly for, but uh, because you have a broken leg, someone will open the door for you. Mm -hmm. No one knows a keratoconic patient can't see or look through like a kaleidoscope, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. How was your vision before, uh, Phil? Would you describe? <laughs> It was, I would have to close my keratoconus eye to see distances, and then my arms just never, as it progressed, my arms weren't long enough. Um, and, and there was, you know, I, I guess, but corrective lenses didn't work. You know, it was just, a, it was like going through life with a mixed match. I could never see what I wanted to see without having to put something on or move it far away. And again, as a, as a teacher, I, I have to do that. Every time. minute of every day, time, yeah. um, it was very, very frustrating. As I said, I was so fortunate to be referred here to excellent care, the thoroughness of the diagnostic and the explanation, um, and providing me the information to make an informed decision, and, and the, the quality of the work here was done was just fabulous. I'm just very happy uh, with the results. Thanks again. Thank you. Congratulations. Yep.